What's up, everybody? We got a How To Tuesday for you today. You know, one of the, my big passions in life is taking my kids fishing. And my kids are now 16, 20, and 22. So I don't really have my finger on the pulse like my friend Scott Brown does. Scott Brown runs Hooked On Family. He's a fishing guide in the Florida Keys, and he also has two young children of his own that he is taking fishing all the time. You've probably seen Grayton um, in a viral video that I've used on my social media, and it's gone all over the internet uh, of him casting under the bushes and uh, catching a snapper. And it was really cool because he obviously has a good command of the rod and he's, he's very practiced. Um, it doesn't just happen that way. Um, so what I want to talk to Scott about today, um, and I've got him on right here. Scott, what's going on? How are you? Hey, what's up, Tom? How you doing? Thanks Brayton, how you doing, again. buddy? Good. Good. <laughs> right on. I love it. Um, so what I wanted to talk to you guys about today is kind of the process of teaching a kid how to fish and, you know, kind of what to expect. And, you know, it's a, it's, it's really kind of a slow process. And, uh, but anyway, if you were to share a little bit of your experience thus far with us, Scott, what would you what would you say to people that kind of have some young kids and they want them to get involved in, in fishing? Um, it's definitely a learning process. Uh, I've only gotten four years of it, so <laughs> great and just turned four. But what I figured out in this short amount of time is what it comes down to is basically uh, mindset and expectation management ultimately what it is and it all starts with how you perceive and your how you how you perceive your day is going to go with your kids in the boat and so and it doesn't even have to be a boat it could be land fishing mm -hmm. kayak what however you you take your kids out on the water but um what it comes down to and my wife and I discussed it is uh basically you have to manage your expectations in the very beginning, you know, not set them too high. You know, we're not going to go out there and catch the top three wherever we're at with kids in the boat. And so we have to understand that we're not going to go out there and ride our kids hard to death, trying to catch these fish and having the ultimate goal of just having fun, you know, and I'm sure you totally can relate to that when your kids were growing up. Absolutely. That's what it's all about. And I think a lot of people get, carried away with trying to get the kid to get this, you know, experience. And honestly, you know, Grayton at this point may be able to tell the difference, but most four-year-olds aren't going to be able to tell the difference between a, a bonefish and a pinfish. I mean, it really, they're not. And they just want the rod to bend and they just want some action and they want some success. And, you know, when it's time to go in, it's time to go in. And it might not be on your schedule. That's what I learned is, is it's all about absolutely. the kid, you know, and their schedule is different than yours. Yep, absolutely. And we've also found um, kind of the caveat on what you're saying is uh, depending on how early you've actually kind of put your kid into the outdoor world, um, you can kind of work left and right with going in or going to the sandbar because they're, their attention span is limited, but at the same time, you can kind of fool them into, oh, yeah, we'll just go over to the next spot, you know, and kind of prolong the actual act of fishing. We've gotten away with that. It's actually kind of become a norm, which now allows us to go fish for the bonefish, the tarpon, and the permit and kind of get away with a little bit longer time on fishing instead of entertaining. You know, there's little tips and tricks that uh, you can go into. Of course, everyone knows having snacks on board, you know, but really what it really comes down to is that entertainment piece and we're actually very lucky down here in the lower keys we have the clear water down here and there's a multitude of life and things to look at you know and if you if you pay more attention to your kid and point these things out he's kind of entertained more you know but um ultimately what we're going to go into is kind of how we start our day and set ourselves up for success with having fun and catching fish at the same time. And what I found is uh, kind of just like starting your every day as a fishing guide, uh, preparation is key, you know, putting a lot of work up front. So that way, when you wake up in the morning and you set out, you don't have to worry about and play catch up, you know? So 
what we do is we prep all of our snacks, all of our food, all of our water beforehand. So we're not rushing around. Um, the other thing is we talk about what we want to do. My wife and I were big on teamwork to make um, our day as fun as possible. We got to have efficiency. And so by working together as a team, we're able to um, actually accomplish that. So with that being said, we talked to the kids like, hey, we're going to go out in the boat. What do you guys want to do? And it's the same answer every single time. Snapper fishing. <laughs> Let's go snapper fishing. And we'll, we'll get into that on a later episode about species and techniques and everything. But uh, for right now, that's our short term goal is to, to catch the snapper. Yeah. Right. What's up? Can I just talk about the comment? Talk about the permit. We'll yeah. talk about the permit another day. We just got our first permit as a family together, and Grayton was pretty stoked about that. But right on. We'll, we'll talk about that some other time, Grayton. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Here we we're yeah, but we're going to talk about something else right now, right? Yeah, I like you. Your ear thing fell out. <laughs> this is a perfect example of what happens on the boat. Yeah, one, it is one thing, and uh, it totally goes astray, but. After you've prepared everything and you have a plan, um, as we know, plans don't always go accordingly. So I have what's called a pace plan, a primary, alternate, contingency, and emergency. So that way, <laughs> you want to talk? We'll talk about snappers another time. All right. I'll talk about that one now. Right now. Yeah. So once you have a pace plan set, and that basically consists of we're going out for Plan A, snappers, right? And we get to the spot, and someone's either there or a storm front comes through, you gotta have the alternate, all right? So you go to your alternate. Maybe your kid is just sick and tired of fishing. What's gonna be that contingency? The sandbar, and then obviously your emergency. You know, you guys come up with your own. But I found that's very effective. That way you actually have like an outline of what you're going to do. Here's the contingencies. Here's how we're gonna execute to keep our kids entertained. And we don't come down to that ultimate, I want to go home. You know, you want to try and stay away from that and fill their day with as much entertainment as possible. Mm -hmm. Because once you go home, there goes the fishing, right? right. Your day, your day is it's done on the water. So, and then of course, after you have your your plan and everything, yeah, we'll show them. We'll show them these little lures here in a second. All right, where was I at? <laughs> once you have your plan, <laughs> once you have your plan, you know, you got the goal that you were working towards with that, and again. Ultimately, that's just spending quality time and then keeping your kids happy on the water. So, right. The other thing with that is uh, we could go into the little, the little things here and there that help Lindsay and I maintain our sanity. <laughs> when you have this little guy running around the boat, we also have our one-year-old who um, is quite mobile. She's a lot more mobile than than Grant was at one, and she likes to try and go overboard. So. That's always fun contending with, you know. Yes. But the so other what, thing, what, uh, what when you've got the the kids on the boat, what's what do you do for life jackets? What type of life jackets do you suggest? Um, what's the thought on life jackets? So I don't have a brand or anything like that, but I like the puddle jumper for Grayton just because it's easy to get on and off. And as you know, down here in the lower keys, it gets hot. I mean, mm -hmm. it was scorching over the past weekend. And um, of course, like we're constantly hydrating, but that life jacket holds in a lot of heat. Yes. So you want to try and find a life jacket that's composed of a mesh material, you know, to help regulate that body heat, you know, while maintaining a good amount of surface area and float. Chandler's is a Mustang brand, according to Lindsay, and she has the full backrest behind her head. Mm -hmm. So that way, if an infant falls into the water, it self rights and keeps her head above the surface. Right. Great it is, however, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say to comment about the, um, the comfort of, you know, the big thing, a lot of kids go on a boat and they get a life jacket that doesn't fit them well. It's hot as it can be. It is just an all around uncomfortable thing. And life jackets have come a long way. So for both safety and comfort, you can find one that is, is far better that fits them well and then be ready because they're going to outgrow it in like months. So, you know, if you got it, if you got another one to hand it down to, that's awesome. But, um, they do outgrow them fast, but that's, that's a great investment on, on something that fits well 
and is comfortable because that means that makes all the difference in the world. And if you don't think it does, put a jacket, put a life jacket on yourself and go fishing in it all day. You're not going to like it. It's oh, hot. You're, you're sweating your, your tail off. Um, anyway, so sorry to interrupt you there, but that's, that's oh, a big, a big thing. Deal. The life jackets. Yeah, absolutely. They're super important, you know? Um, but again, you have to find that balance of being comfortable, having fun. And then obviously the safety factor when it comes into that. But that leads us right into uh, being comfortable. And uh, as parents, you want to be comfortable. You know, you don't want to be stressed out. You don't want to be stressed out watching your kids, playing the safety piece. And a lot that goes into that is kind of staying, keeping that positive mindset while you're on the boat and remaining calm. It is very frustrating when you're trying to land either a certain fish or you're just trying to complete that goal that we talked about at the very beginning of our conversation. And you got the kids just not working with you. You know, one kid <laughs> wants to go this way. The other one wants to go the other way. This kid just fell out of the boat. The other kid has gotten into the cooler and he's pulling out all kinds of stuff. Or like we had the other day, one of our kids was in the bait. Well, the wind blew it over and almost took off great and finger, but <laughs> This is the normal stuff that you're going to encounter whenever you're fishing on a boat with kids. Same thing when you're on the side of a bank. You know, chances are your kid's not going to be wearing a life jacket on the side of a bank, and you're going to have to have 110% effort dedicated towards your kid, you know, or someone else's kid making sure that he's okay. So with that being said, you're going to get frustrated. Kid's going to be casting into the mangrove roots getting caught up. <laughs> he's going to be breaking stuff. It frustrates me so much and it takes Lindsay to be like, hey, Scott, you know, like, it's okay, chill. You know, I don't throw a fit or anything, but she can tell that I'm, I'm reaching my, my mental capacity on patience, right? And so it takes her to dial me back like, hey, like, remember, we're here to have fun, Scott. And I'm like, yeah, no, I get it. So remaining calm, staying positive is probably one of the most important things because these kids, they will test your patience, you know? But well, just uh, <laughs> just having one kid in the boat will test your patience. And now when you get two, it's it's not it's not twice as much. It's exponentially more. And um, and then, you know, you have you have uh, even more than that, three or whatever. And now you're not even playing zone defense anymore. It's like, oh, absolutely. I don't know, it's like you're being out, overrun by an army. Um, but you know, one of the absolutely. biggest things that uh, that I've passed on to people that are taking kids fishing is that you know, it's really not about going fishing, what you, you, you alluded to this and you've kind of said something else here that, that like Grayton, even though he can cast under the mangroves and he's caught all kinds of fish, he still enjoys playing in the live well. And I've had a number of dads and moms uh, contact me after listening to several different podcasts. And we did a couple of shows about this. And I'm like, look, the, the point is you get the kids out on the boat, you have a good time. So they want to come out again. And if their idea of a good time is playing in a live well, which is basically an aquarium and every other aquarium that they've ever seen in their life, nobody will let them put their arms in there up to the shoulder. And now all of a sudden, here's one right here full of all kinds of cool stuff and they can play in it. That might be what they want to do. And if that's a positive memory that they have about going on the boat. That's a positive thing. And you're like, yeah, you want to play in the boat? You want to play in the bait? Well, play in the bait. Well, and then eventually they will get around to wanting to fish. Eventually they will um, not want to play in the lab well quite as much. But if you constantly are telling them, no, you're going to kill the bait. Don't, don't put your hands in there. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do this. Then it's a negative experience. They just are not having fun. They'd rather do something else. So if they want to play in the lab well, let them play in the lab well. If, if all of a sudden you come across a flat and you find some starfish there or some sand dollars or something, and they want to look at those, stop and look at those. You know, that's absolutely. And, and maybe your fishing trip, you know, it's the perfect tide. The bonefish are tailing. Everything's happening, but they're not interested in that. This is their day, not your day. And that's, that was one of the big things that I had to come to grips with is that, okay, my day is going to be tomorrow or another day this is their day oh absolutely and you know what i mean what you just said echoes i mean it you pretty much painted the same thing that we we go through you know uh 
Grayton's called bonefish. He doesn't care about the bonefish, you know? And every time that Lindsay and I are like, hey, we're going to go bust out a fly rod right here right quick. We're going to try and get ourselves a bonefish. It's usually met with a total, but what about the snapper? Yeah. Oh, man. And so (laughs) we got (laughs) – we're just like, yeah, but it's a bonefish, but kids don't understand they uh, they don't understand that the 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 sports the sports fish and some of the game fish they're they're just whatever to them, you know, but those snappers, those needlefish, those barracuda are lesser than fish, you know, that we don't particularly target much. Those are, some of those fish are what captivates kids imagination I know. You know? It, it does and i do not think that 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 it should be discouraged in fact i think maybe uh all the sport fishermen should should maybe think like a kid because we're all supposed to be out there to just have fun and the the coolest looking fish are often the ones that you know sport fishermen look down upon the barracuda the 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 needle fish the cow fish the the box fish the the uh the weird colorful strange That's fish. Right. That's what they want to catch. And we used to have this thing where we would do the uh an award where we would um have like the the smallest fish, whoever caught the smallest fish and whoever caught the weirdest fish. And then we one. would like have this little thing and the kids could draw um a little, you know, color something on a piece of paper and then we'd put it on the the uh refrigerator for the the week, you know, the weirdest fish. Hayden caught the Absolutely. weirdest fish, you know, <laughs> that was, yeah, that's what always is, what they wanted to do. What is your favorite fish? Yeah, you. Snapper. Snapper. What kind of snapper? The other day we went out and we, uh, there's like a particular spot off this flat and uh, there's a multitude of snapper there. And so it's nice because I get to catch my top three or whatever that is on the flat at that time. And then Grayton can go off and then catch his snapper. And so we, we got to go out there and we found a variety of them and we kept catching these grass porgies and mm. believe it or not, and you probably, you know, they're actually very colorful, some of them. And so they had some of the craziest colorations on them, I guess, to help camouflage themselves amongst their habitat. But Grayton was, he was like, let's keep catching these things. And I was like, yeah, I mean, we keep catching them like by the dozens. Let's keep doing it, you know, because it keeping him entertained. It's got his he's got his rod in his hand, you know, and so everything is lining up and it's just a simple grass party, mm-hmm. you know, but yeah, it's so pretty cool seeing that. Those are some great. Um, those are really some great uh, pieces of advice and information that, that you and Grayton have shared with us. If I could add one more thing to it is when you're when you're. Um, when you've got a kid and you're teaching them how to fish and you're catching all these weird and crazy fish, there's a book and there's probably way better resources now with the internet and everything else and iPad and, and probably apps of, for this, but old school way to do it. And it's a good way to keep your kid involved in old school things is there's a book called AJ McLean's guide to saltwater fishes. And mm-hmm. it's got very colorful um, illustrations in it. And you can give that to your kid. I gave one to each of my kids and I told them it's fine to write in this book, whatever. And I can go find my son's book and it's dog eared and stuff is circled (laughs) and checked off. And we would check off every fish that we caught. So like that grass porgy, it's going to be in there and you can tell these slight differences between one and another. And the kids just thought that was the greatest thing. It was like a stamp collection or a, or just a collection of these fish that they had caught over the years. So that's another way to keep them engaged uh, and nice. also to kind of educate them and have them be able to tell the difference between all of these different fish and, and, and another way just to, to keep them excited. So thanks so Absolutely. much for all of these tips. Grayton, it's great to watch you fish on YouTube. I, uh, I hope we can do it together in person one day. Um, one day. Yeah. But uh, thanks so much for all these great tips. And uh, if you guys are interested, you can go to Hooked on Family. How do, how, well, how do people get in touch with you and follow your, what you're doing? So we have our, our website. We're getting that together. We're starting to jam up a bunch of articles, editorials, and tips, tricks, videos. And you can find that at www.hookedonfamily.com. You can reach us on a, our Instagram account, which is Hooked on Family. And then obviously our YouTube channel, uh, which is hooked on family also. And so 
any of those three are perfectly fine. We're usually really good about answering questions, especially if they're if they pertain like kid questions or anything like that. And uh, got no problem with sharing tips and tricks. Uh, if you come down to lower keys with your kids and you want to be successful out on the water, but we appreciate it. All right, great. Well, I hope you guys get out there this afternoon, catch something good, and um, we will all try to apply some of these tips. We're taking our own children fishing. And uh, so that's awesome, man. Scott, that's Captain Scott Brown from the Lower Keys and the Florida Keys, Hooked on Family. Yes, see you later. He's just been dying. Right on. He's, all he wants to do is talk about the snapper. Well, we'll that's see you it. Guys later. All right. Bye, Grayton. <laughs> see you later. Okay, that's it for this episode of How To Tuesday. That's Captain Scott Brown in the Lower Keys and Grayton Hooked On Family. Check them out for more tips on how to take your kids fishing.